Hi, this is Team Dextrous. This is our recorded project presentation based on the design of wireless satellite hub. So basically our task was to design a wireless satellite hub that handles traffic as specified in the test sets. The satellite hub can handle up to three devices and a satellite link. Now this is the black box of our main module. This is a pin description of the main module. So we have the TS pin, which is the data size of the incoming data tag, which is the tag of the incoming or the outgoing data. Then we have the device ID, uh, which shows the device that is requesting or sending the data. Then we have data in and data out, which are both bit serial links. Then we have DC enabled signal, which is asserted high each time data center is accessed. Then we have taken following assumptions in our module. We have assumed that the memory is empty prior to the execution of each test case. Also, a predefined set of value is considered for data size 128 byte, 512 byte and 1024 byte. So if the device writes value to the hub, these files will be accessed depending on the data size. The global clock is taken as 10 nanosecond. Now this is an internal block diagram of our design. The satellite hub is the DUT and the three device and the three device and the data center are the part of the test environment. The satellite hub consists of a controller and the memory modules. The controller is responsible for organizing the data in the memory. It also stores the tag memory address and the memory access in form of a header. The memory module consists of 13 memories. Apart from the hub, there's also a deserializer and a serializer. Now this deserializer, it converts the bit serial data received from the device to a 16 bit parallel data and gives it to the hub. Then the serializer converts the 16 bit parallel data that it got from the memory module to bit serial data when a read operation is performed. Next, we have the FSM for the satellite hub controller so we have designed uh, the fsm for this controller module initially the controller is in the idle state now if the read if the write signal is high and the header flag is also one then it goes to the right header state now in the right header state the controller stores the valid bit address memory access and size of the data in the form of a 16-bit header this state also determines which memory will be accessed. Now, if the data write flag is one, then the FSM goes to the write data state and the data is written in the memory. According to the memory type used, it transits between the write data state and the stall state. For example, if 512 byte memory is used, then it is stalled for eight clock cycles to add the write latency. Now, if the read signal is high, then first the header is checked in the right uh, in the read header state. This state tells if the data is request that is requested is present in the hub or not. If it is not present in the hub, then it transits to the device to DC state. That means our data center is enabled and the device will send the will request the data from the data center itself. If a valid bit is present in the if the header is present in the hub then it goes to the read data state if the data is uh, so it goes to the read data state and stalling is done according to the memory type that has been accessed now we'll discuss about the memory accessing technique that we have used in our design we have basically we have incorporated a directory based coherence protocol in our design First of all, let me tell you about the header data. So our header data, it consists of data size, which is of two bits, memory type that is accessed, which is of four bits, address nine bits, valid, which is one bit. Now, first of all, we'll check which memory is empty. Now that is decided by this condition. Mem empty should be greater than data size. So if a particular memory satisfies this condition, 
then the data is stored in that memory and the header data stores the memory being accessed. So the start address from where the memory stores uh, start storing the data is stored in the header data. This process eases our task while accessing the data during read and reduces complexity as the number of comparisons done are largely reduced. So these two are the basic benefits of a directory based cache coherence uh, of coherence protocol. Now the first 32 location of memory one, these are used for storing the header data. Now as shown in the previous slide in the table over here, the two bit size representation is shown in the table. If the data size is 128, the header stores, stores 00. If it is 512, then header stores 01. If it is 1024, then 10 is stored in the header. Now in this exam, in this slide, we have shown examples of how addressing is done in our design. The header data is stored at tag location. So the tag acts as an index itself. When accessing a data from the hub, the header data at tag location is directly accessed. If the valid bit is zero, like in the case over here, that means the tag we are searching for is not present in the hub. So the data center is accessed. If the valid bit is one in all of these cases, that means the data is present in the hub. So the memory access and the start address are taken from the header data and the data is read from the respective memory. Like in the first case, uh, we have M2 that has been accessed. So M2 is accessed. In the second case, M3 is accessed. And in the third case, M13 is accessed. While in the last case, uh, it does not contain any valid bit. So that means the data is not present in the hub. So directly goes to the data center. Now we have also designed an interface that connects the hub to the data center. It is basically a kind of a wishbone interface. It issues a 32 bit command bus. We have mapped the command bus in the following manner as shown over here. The MSB is SOP that is the startup packet. The next is a constant six, which is a part of IPv6. Next 19 bits are all zero. Then we have the read and write signal, the size and the tag. So if the device want to access the data from the data center, it issues a read command. The data is read from the data center. When all the data has been transmitted from data center, it issues a read acknowledge command, which says that all the data has been sent from the data center. When all the data is received by the device, it issues a read acknowledge command from its side. When the full transaction is complete, read transaction done is asserted high. The same thing happens in the case of write access. Next, we have the full flow, full design flow of our modules. So first of all, we have a driver file which generates the data input file of size 128, 512 and 1024. Let me show you these files. So this is a 128 bit data file that we have generated using the driver program. Likewise, we have uh, the same kind of file for 512 and 1024 files. Then again, we have stored all the test cases in this test file. As it was in the Excel sheet, we have stored it into the text file. So over here, our test environment takes all these test cases and the stimulus files, files as well as inputs and uh, it is connected to the data center and the satellite hub. Now let me go to the uh, programming modules for these uh, these modules. So here we have this code for the satellite hub. So basically this is the code for the wireless satellite hub. Uh, these are all the in um, the the all the signals over here. We have a deserializer which converts a bit serial link into the 16 bit data. And then we have the hub controller, which is the main part of our program. And then we have a serializer which converts the 16 bit parallel data that it got from the hub to a bit serial data. 
now let us have a look at a specific timing diagram in our module so over here a send request was issued by the device to the hub so the right signal is asserted high so as soon as the right uh, signal is asserted high the header flag is also asserted so at this point of time when the header flag is asserted high the header data is written into the memory module so we have the memory module over here in which uh, the header data is written over here the header data is written after the header data has been written the data bits from the device to the hub memory are written over here so in that case the data wr flag is asserted high so data data has been written so after the complete data is written again the header flag is asserted high and the data flag is asserted low now we can see that it is very difficult to analyze these results in the timing diagram because there is a lot of latency involved so we have compiled all these results in a text file so let us have a view at all these text file so we have the output files okay over here so we have uh, the output files compiled for all the three test cases now let us have a look at test case 1 output files so we have this header output file this stores all the headers uh, that that are involved in our read uh, in our send command so let us have a look at the first header in this case the last two bit indicates the data size so that means the bits are 00 that means the data size was 128 the memory that was accessed is 0 that means the memory 1 was accessed and the address corresponding to the memory is 32 bit and the valid bit is 1 similarly for all the other cases the he header is stored but uh, let us have a look at these three cases over here the valid bit is 0 that means the memory was full and the data could not be stored into the hub so the device had direct access to the data center now this was a header file let us have a look at the latency file so in our code itself we have calculated the latency for the various test cases so for the first test case device number one issued a send command for data size 128 and the latency is 18496 so this is calculated by our module by our code itself so all these latencies are calculated and over here let us have a look over here so the latency is huge over here that is because the memory was full so the hub could not store the data and the data uh, data center enabled signal is asserted high so the device has a direct access to the data center also we have three different files that stores the uh, data for request data for the three devices so all these three requests were done by device number one for data size 128 and 1024 so the tags corresponding tags are also stored over here similarly we have three files for all these three devices so this was first test case and we have similar results for all the three test cases over here. So this is a complete design flow and the end of our demo. Now let us have a look at the benchmark measures uh, for the module. So we had three benchmark measures, unit cost, communication cost and cumulative latency. We have calculated all these strings for the three test cases over here. So these are the measures these are the uh, cost these this is a memory cost which we were able to achieve and communication cost and the cumulative latency so the memory unit cost is calculated as follows so total three 13 memories were used one of memory one two of memory two and ten of memory three so the total memory cost is hundred dollar thank you for watching this video uh, uh, the rest of the calculations have been stored in the zip file which is uh, given.